Hello, and welcome to First and Last Podcast. I'm Michelle. And I'm Satara, your hosts for an exciting journey into the world of real estate rentals. Each episode, we dive into everything you need to know about renting, offering top tips for both renters and landlords. We also have amazing conversations with special guests from all aspects of the rental world, keeping you informed and entertained. So join us for a practical and engaging journey into residential leasing. Gain valuable insights, expert advice, lots of laughs as we share our experiences and funny stories. Welcome to First and Last Podcast, where renting becomes a breeze. Let's get started. Kind of talk (laughs) about what First and Last is about. Yes. So First and Last Podcast, um, this, this kind of, you know, is an idea I had in mind for, I don't know, it's been like since last year, I think it was. Mm-hmm. I always wanted to start a podcast, real estate related, but specifically when it comes to uh, renting, um, leasing, residential real estate. So um, with all the experience that me and you have had working for property management companies and working with tenants and landlords, corporate landlords and private landlords, I thought it'd be really fun to talk about our experiences and all the crazy and fun stories that we had um, while, you know, working in this industry. And I'm still working in the industry as a, a licensed realtor in Toronto. Um, and you've done a lot of different roles working in real estate as well. Yeah. So right? started off um, for us working in facilities. Uh, managing um, anything when it comes to buildings in particular and properties and then working into the customer service side and finally landing myself into marketing and it's right you kind of get to see all aspects of the residential real estate which is and specifically rentals it's seeing from the tenant side to the landlords to just even also the people who work on those yeah. properties as well um, so it's like the operation you know, side too. Yeah. yeah, and it's kind of like a 360 view of yes. rental. And it's not just one way of looking at it as, you know, employees. We kind of see it always because we were also renters at, you know, that's right. We have our Some own point. experiences. Yeah, exactly. When it comes to or um, a landlord for that matter. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's nice to kind of have a little bit more of a fun banter, which is kind of you dive into rental and get yeah. to kind of give people a little bit of a inside view and outside view of renting. Absolutely. And I, I also think that there's there's not enough information out there for tenants or landlords. At this day and age with all the information, everyone is still confused about renting and what's needed and what can I ask for. Um, Everyone talks about buying and selling. You've got everyone to tell you everything about mortgages and the market and this and that, but you don't really have anyone to guide you through the rental process. It's it's funny that it's so confusing for people, but it is, there's a lot to know. So I think it'd be fun to learn a little bit in a fun way and, and learn through our stories and experiences and, um, hopefully people will learn from us a little bit <laughs> we are hoping and as I said I'm learn. from Toronto and you're in Hong Kong so you can give a different perspective um, since moving there the last couple of years too yeah and it's definitely been um, a very different ride here in Hong Kong than it was in Toronto um, but you know funny to talk about Toronto like what do you think is the requirements that everyone like what should people keep in mind when they're going to go look for an apartment or a house or whatever a rental in Toronto what should they have on hand or have accessible to them it really depends on the renter's situation okay you've got all kinds of renters you have individuals who are um, you know self-employed or you know they're working for some large company or maybe they're a student they're retired so it really depends on your uh, your situation but um generally speaking um some of the you know most obvious things that you should have prepared are or maybe they're not very obvious um is your employment letter very important mm-hmm. um a couple of pay stubs your credit check 
uh, it's a full credit report. So, and we can talk about that a little bit later because there's a lot to know about that in general. Um, photo ID, government issued. I once had a client, I asked for her photo ID and she took a selfie. <laughs> she took a selfie and sent it to me. Can you imagine? I said, You're, that's a beautiful photo, but I need a driver's no. license. She was thoroughly embarrassed, but she'd never rented before. They don't yeah, know. Yeah. It's as simple as that. These little things they don't know. And so I thought it was super cute, but that was a first for me. Um, some other things that you need. There's a, a rental application and then, you know, other documents as well. We can go into that. But the main things, employment letter, pay stubs, credit report, uh, photo ID. These are the bare bones basics that you need. Yeah. And, you know, so once you have all this paperwork on hand or you can access it, when you're right. applying, what is it that you really need when you're like, okay, I'm going to go now and view this apartment? What what should you be expecting mm. when you're viewing? Do I need to bring cash with me? Do I need to bring... <laughs> debit card a visa like what am I bring what am I bring how do I get the apartment yeah, what do I do I, yeah exactly do I just say I want it I will yeah. take it yeah so step one obviously book the appointment with whoever is showing you the property and understand who's showing you the property that's very important too. So if you're going to an apartment building where it's managed by a property management company, it's very easy to look them up as a company and book an appointment through one of the leasing agents and all is dandy and they'll explain their process, which may be a little bit more or less or whatever. Now, if you're working with a private landlord, a little bit different, you know, you got to do a little bit more of your own due diligence and, and, and ask the right questions to the landlord. Um, that being said, you're asking me, what, how do they get the apartment? How should they be prepared? So let's say, for example, you're going to a property management company to rent an apartment, okay, in a multifamily building. So this is a building that has many, many units. It's not a condo. An apartment building is owned by usually a company, mm -hmm. and it's managed by a property management company. Fair enough. No one owns the units. Um, that being said, you know, they will obviously give you a rental application. They'll explain to you uh, how they work, how the deposit structure works for first and last month's rent. Um, if they accept debit, visa, some of them do, some of them don't. Some of them might say, bring me a personal check, bring me a bank draft. Um, when you're working with a private landlord, do not bring cash. Actually, don't ever bring cash, period. Okay, <laughs> don't ever, 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 ever bring cash. One of my pet peeves is, People coming to the city, they're not familiar with Toronto and, and the mm -hmm. fast paced environment and how mm -hmm. things go so quickly. You, you see a lot of um, things on the news about tenants getting scammed. You know, they got scammed. Mm -hmm. The landlord mm -hmm. took their money. Well, a lot of times it's these tenants who are little, you know, you know, what's the term green behind the ears or whatnot. Yeah. They go up with cash thinking that people are honest people. And, and most people are, but there's always going to be some that aren't and they may steal your money and then you're going to be in the situation where yeah. you're out $5,000. Okay, sure. so note to self, know who you're working with, mm -hmm. um, with the landlord, ask the right questions, try to figure out, you know, are they legit? Um, and when you do provide a deposit, make sure you get a receipt, you take pictures of your check and make sure it's a bank draft. So it's, it's yeah. easily traceable. Yeah. Yeah. That's my recommendation for you know, when it comes to deposits. Yeah. Um, so if you're interested, like you're asking me, how do you get the apartment? Just make sure you have all your ducks in a row, have your paperwork ready, mm -hmm. have your first and last plus a few more months ready in case. Um, and then that should put you, you know, ahead of a lot of other people, but then it really comes down to your qualifications now in yeah. those, those documents that you're providing. Yeah. Sorry, that was a long winded answer, but that's the long story short. Yeah. And I think <laughs> it's there's because so much to know. There's yeah. So much. And the process actually, especially when you're looking in certain times of the year, the process can go by really quick and you can't be waiting for yeah. your work to email you the employment contract and there's five people interested in the apartment. So it is a quick process. And I think that's actually same here in Hong Kong, Toronto. I know it was. It's like you see an apartment, you know, you show that apartment four times already throughout the day and two people are already interested. You can't wait on one yeah. person to be like, let me go get my employment contract. I don't have checks. 
So it's like, you need to make sure that you understand the process can be quick. And Mm -hmm. one, actually another thing to note on is scams. So I've seen this actually in Toronto and Hong Kong where people pretend to have rentals available and they ask for a deposit before you even go see it. And then they take the money and then they disappear. So that's actually something I've seen here. And I know also in Toronto. So it's like, you know, scams are almost the same, I guess, all across the like the globe um but you are right you need to make your research you need to do the research if people don't seem you know legitimate this company is not real landlord doesn't seem you know doesn't isn't answering correctly things are not matching up do not give money up front because you're gonna lose it ever yeah Mm -hmm. don't work with cash don't work with cash never give money before viewing the unit (laughs) don't walk around with a lot of cash (laughs) ready to go down for an apartment (laughs) um yeah and I think it's like it's a lot of people it this could be maybe the third um apartment that they rented for some people they could really be like you said green behind the ears or wet behind the ears whatever the saying is yeah they don't know (laughs) how they should do it so either you know the option is going by themselves and doing the research, finding the places they like, mm-hmm. or the other option, mm-hmm. which is going through realtor. Yes. And I guess they both have pros and cons, right? Like, or what do you think? What would be better? Or is it just up to kind of personal preference of? It, I would say it's pers- personal preference, preference, but it's also um, your level of understanding the rental market. So if you're someone who's savvy and you're an avid renter and you like to move every one to two years and you know move to different parts, you you understand now how it kind of works and more or less what the landlords are going to ask for and what you, you should be prepared um, to provide. If you're new, new to the city, new to renting, or maybe you haven't rented in 10, 20 years, or even five years, things change rapidly. Mm-hmm. And if you're in a time crunch and you need someone to get the job done and get the apartment, you don't have time. Um, I'd highly, highly recommend an experienced realtor. Um, I wouldn't say all realtors, just Mm -hmm. because you are a realtor, know the ins and outs when it comes to residential leasing, even though, you know, they should, Um, they don't. And that's the reality. So you want to find an agent, if you choose the agent route, um, who has experience, go on Google, check out the reviews, ask them how many do you, where do you, where do you practice? Where do you uh, work? Downtown? Or is it, you know, outside the city? What kind of experience do you have in general? Very, very important. Um, So my advice is, yeah, it really depends on your level of comfort. Mm -hmm. Um, At the end of the day, working with an agent doesn't necessarily cost you anything because the landlord, if it's a a listing that's found through realtor.ca MLS, um, the tenant doesn't necessarily owe any uh, commissions Mm -hmm. for the agent to do to get you the apartment, essentially, mm-hmm. they're working for you, mm-hmm. right? So that is the benefit there. They're they're running around. They're sending the documents. They're telling you what they need to submit versus you doing the research and doing all the work. That's my opinion on that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I what about definitely... what about in Hong Kong? Do do renters use agents or are they going out privately finding their own places typically? Actually, it's a little bit kind of like how Toronto is. You either can search yourself. Or you can go through yeah. an agent, and it's kind of the same thing, um, except here, um, yeah, same thing. You the the actually the commission split, so it's split between the tenant and the um the landlord. So that one month is actually split between the both, like the landlord and the tenant both pay that one month together collectively. So they do pay the commission. To the agent. Yeah, to the agent. Um, actually, that's the same oh, in Hong wow. Kong. That's the same in Hong Kong and in mainland China. I actually have an apartment that we rented in mainland China, so it's the same. Um, kind of the same idea. So, sorry, just so I'm clear, though, just so I'm clear that the the tenant pays first and last still in yes. Hong Kong. Yes, but a portion of their money goes to the agent. Yes, it's it's not like first and last plus another half. Is no, it? no, it's like so. Then really, it's the landlord just paying the full month, then, yeah, out of the money received from the tenant, yeah. Okay, yeah. same thing. Um, yeah. mainland China, though, I do believe there's like a slight fee that we ended up paying up front directly outside of the actual lease agreement that we had. 
and the lease like agreements an here fee? kind of mm-hmm. yeah kind of like that um here it's two mm-hmm. years um first year is fixed meaning you can't get out of oh. it at all whatsoever but your rental price is fixed for two years so the second year oh wow. you can leave at any time a well, lot of course giving one month notice but it's like you can technically leave at any time oh. but the price is locked for that two years now there's no stipulation I can sign for five-year lease a seven-year lease and lock myself in for that pricing for however long depending how much really? I love the place and it's even better for the landlord because now they're guaranteed someone living there for a long right. time but then it doesn't work out if your pricing is going up um mm. so kind of I mean there's some similarities to Toronto and there's some differences there uh but when it comes to finding the place you can find off of Facebook they have Facebook yeah. listings, just like how Toronto is there's Facebook listings you can go through and uh, a real estate agent as well and usually it depends mm-hmm. on the location so where we end up living it's like an island in Hong Kong um, little tiny mm. island and you you actually cannot find a lot of the listings online on like the real estate like let's say like mls dot like realtor.ca you won't be able to find the actual listing on there um you'd come to meet right. with the agents but sometimes individual landlords like to post on facebook so we found ours through like this buy and sell website very like I thought oh, you were going to say newspaper. Yeah, like, there's... <laughs> kind of like that. Okay, I, I bet so that's like still a, a thing. It's like a, like usually people sell bags and like clothing and furniture on there. Mm. Not as like low end as like Kijiji like, kind of level, kind of like Facebook. Craigslist? Yeah, mm, not that oh. like ghetto. <laughs> not as bad. <laughs> not as bad. Uh, not to say okay. it's bad to buy on there, but it's not like that. No, it's no, more like you can actually buy stuff on this website. And we ended up uh, lucking out because the landlords, they actually end up selling and we got new landlords and they're great. Like they're very responsive and we all know how important it is to have good responsive landlords because like something breaks, they're immediately sending someone over to fix it. And um, that's like, you know, it's great to have a good landlord because then you have a good relationship. Uh, But it's just like, there's, there are some similarities and there's some differences. So yeah, you can do real estate agent or you can search yourself. We were comfortable ourselves because we're familiar with um, Mm -hmm. real estate and we kind of know when to look out for scams and stuff like that. But, you know, comparing to an experience I had in Toronto when I was looking for a house, and this is when I was like full-time employed. I had about five years under one company and I just sold my home. So it's like, we had a good deposit um, that we were able to give. We had, you know, our bank statements were great. Credit score was great. Great work yeah. experience. And the real mm-hmm. estate agent for the landlord asked me for $800 damage deposit. And I was like, what? That's illegal. Wow. <laughs> and she's like, no, yeah. no, the landlord wants it. I'm like, yeah, but that's illegal. And she's like, oh, but the landlord's yeah. like, and I was like, okay. It doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and she was trying to tell me that their previous tenant wrecked the house. And mm. they wanted their new tenants to put down a hundred dollar deposit on top of the key, on top of the first and last. And they wanted me to, in a way, they I wanted you know a little bit more down, um, because they said my work experience wasn't long enough. And they had like this whole long list of requirements. And at the end, I'm like, mm-hmm. you know, first of all, what you're asking for is illegal. I'm not giving you a hundred dollars damage deposit. That's just illegal. It's not in the RTA. And then funny enough, a week goes by, I guess no one else was interested. She calls me and she's like, oh, please, come on, sign the place. They'll take away the deposit. I was like, mm. <laughs> and I think it's, no. it's, it's something that it's very, um, not a lot of people know, I think, that those type of damage yeah. deposit requests are not in the RTA. Yes, absolutely. And and I think, and maybe you would have paid that if you hadn't worked in the real estate yeah, industry. Totally. Of course. In multifamily, you, you'd be like, oh, well, we need the place. Oh, I guess I got to pay the 700 and no one has time to read the RTA sometimes. Like you just don't. Let's, mm-hmm. let's be real. Um, but you're right. A lot of people don't know. It's just education. And, and what's sad is the agent is asking you and they yeah. should know better. It doesn't matter what the landlord wants. As an agent, you need to be able to advise your client what they can and can't ask for. Mm-hmm. That's your job. You represent the client. So 
yeah, it's really unfortunate, but it's it still happens. It still happens. Yeah. Um, I had a similar experience recently um, where an agent, uh, she hasn't signed me, sent me the signed lease yet because mm -hmm. a deposit that was stated for keys, a key deposit, she wants change to a damage deposit for damages and or normal wear and tear. She actually said this to what? me. I want it for normal wear and tear. And I said, so of course, I had to Girl. quote the RTA and say, well, that's illegal. <laughs> Nonetheless, I need the signed lease, right? Yeah. So it, it's just, it's shocking, right? It's shocking that it's still happening. And I feel like now more than ever, people are talking a little bit more about rentals and the rules and regs. There's so much more information. And it's just sad that still, people don't know about security deposits that you cannot ask for that there's no such thing yeah I don't know if that's how it is in Hong Kong um if you guys take I, I know every like in the states they'll take d damages for pets everything mm -hmm. everything and that's legal maybe not all states but I know in Florida for sure uh here they don't take uh damage deposits or key deposits it's usually last month's rent but they have more leeway to decline someone if they have animals or kids they're allowed to there's no stipulation on like if it's an animal can you bring it in there's nothing like that um mm. but yes they have the last month's rent here it's kind of like if the landlord trusts you well enough no problem like our landlord didn't ask for like mm. any employment contracts or like you know, are they both working? They just really? asked for one and then it was kind of like sign it, pay the money, and then we're good. Like they didn't I don't know. Oh, so you kind of lucked like, out? Or? Yeah. I think yeah. it's also like our landlord's a little kind of like too trusting, maybe in a way. Like it was kind mm. of they were a little more trusting when it came to us. So they were like, Yeah, you guys, you guys seem great. They met us and they're like, Oh, no problem. You have a dog, yeah. looks great. Like, no worries at all. Um, it could also be the location that we're living because it's like an island life. So it's a little bit more less. And I think maybe like, you know, you meet them, they're like, oh yeah, they have kids. You know, they here they tend to be a little bit more like, oh, they have kids. They're going to live here longer. They're not going to be like jumping around, moving around and just disappearing True. in a different way. Um, whereas like, you know, in Toronto, I find that sometimes people can be like, oh, you have kids. So don't want to run to you because they have children. And, you yeah. know, going back to that whole damage deposit situation you're right I would have said yes if I didn't know because I was trying to move with one kid yeah. and pregnant and another one was on the way and I really needed a place yes. soon and it was stressful yeah, yeah. and I think a lot of times that because people are not educated when it comes to it a lot of us will say yes let's do it let's just pay it whatever get it over with not realizing what they're asking for is illegal it's not actually mm -hmm. mandated that you have to provide that it's just kind of right you know they just want that extra coverage for themselves so question what do you do then let's say you're in a jam and you need to move quickly and an agent or the landlord say well I want a security deposit for your pet I want a thousand dollars for damages and you know that they can't ask for it. And you know that if you say, no, I'm not comfortable paying it, that likely they're going to say no to you. Mm -hmm. What do you do in that situation? What would you do? Like, would you pay it because you're desperate and you need to rent a place and da -da -da -da, knowing that it's wrong, but you have no choice? Because a lot of tenants are in that situation. They're like, well, I don't have a choice right now. Yeah. Or you're back to the drawing board. It's, it's kind of unfortunate. Yeah, it is. And it and I think in that situation, a lot of times people are, are just going to pay that amount. And it's just kind of like the whole yeah. idea of this podcast is that people are educated so that mm -hmm. they're not taking advantage of. So they yeah. know, you know, they can't be so that, you know, if one person is going to say no, hopefully the next 10 people they show the apartment to will also say no. And then they'll realize yeah. what we're doing is wrong and they change the way that they're doing it and hopefully learn from that. Um, and I mean, like, yeah. we can also talk about things that tenants and landlords should be aware of, but, and it's right. sad because a lot of people are kind of pushed into that corner and they have no choice and they have to say yes, because what can you do? You're not going to be put on yeah. the street and then you're like, oh, well, I yeah. can't, I don't want to pay this because, you know, I'm going to stick it to him and mm -hmm. he's asking is illegal. Yeah. Sometimes you're just going to be like, whatever, let's just Forget pay it. it, pay it. Yeah. And again, going back to what this podcast is about today. It's the tips. 
right? Mm -hmm. I just thought of something. Never mind getting your documents ready. Number one tip, as soon as you know you need to move or you have an inkling that you need to start moving, do it in advance. Please don't oh, wait yes. till the last minute. <laughs> the biggest tip I can give you is start looking, I would say six weeks out to, mm -hmm. to you know, eight weeks out before you actually need to move. Get a feel for the market. Go look at different mm -hmm. neighborhoods. Go check out apartments. Do I want to live in this, this part of town? Is it worth the rent? Can I afford this neighborhood? Because that process alone takes a few weeks of, yeah. you know, booking the showings and all this fun stuff. And then now you've lost half a month or a month in total. And you're like, I still don't have a place. And mm -hmm. you're scrambling. And when you become desperate, you make poor decisions. You're not prepared. And then you regret moving. And this is why everyone's like, I hate moving. I hate yeah. moving. Well, it's yeah. because you're not organized. And you got to be prepared and, and start in advance. So my number one tip, start in advance. Two months. Yes. Yes. One to two months. More like six weeks to eight weeks. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's definitely something that everyone should be aware of when they become, when they become like, begin the process to moving or even thinking about it as doing that research too. Like just sitting down and like, look at your computer. Okay. Google maps. What is it that I want? What am I looking for? Yeah. Do some research. Okay. I'm familiar with these property management companies or whatever it is. And you're beginning that research process mm -hmm. versus you have two weeks out and you're calling everyone and you're like, I need to oh, see yeah. this place. This needs to be signed by you know, two days from now. And you're like, what is yeah. going on? And then that's when, yeah, mistakes happen is when you're unprepared. Mm -hmm. Totally you're unprepared. unprepared. That's yeah. exactly it. Yeah, that's that would be my number one tip. <laughs> and then other than that, um, just do your research. Just yeah. do your research. Ask questions. Yeah. Very, very important. And Definitely. listen to podcasts like this so you can learn about what to do and what not to do. Yes. And you can listen to all <laughs> right. our amazing stories in the future of things that we've encountered, funny stories, crazy stories, um, and hopefully learn a little bit more when you make your next decision or, you know, um, next business decision. Also, because we will have tips from landlords when it comes to right. marketing and tenants. What yes. What do you, what should you look out for when you want to lease your unit? What is your ideal, you know, ticks for what is a good tenant? How do I know? How do you pre-qualify? Yes. Yeah, exactly. What are you These for are for all credit checks. Don't get scammed. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's my How to Don't get scammed. Hell, don't get scammed. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we should have like a logo scammed with a big X through it. No, <laughs> don't get scammed. <laughs> um no you're absolutely right about that uh don't get scammed um what was it sorry what was the thing you were talking about again you were just saying for oh, future about, podcasts yeah um, that we have um tips for landlords as well like how they can pick the right tenants and you know yeah what to look out for when it comes to what should you be looking out for on credit checks to ensure that they're authentic that's right yeah. um yeah. and we have like so many we have like a, this ginormous list of topics that michelle has already split and i mean like some <laughs> of them are gonna be great because we got some great stories from Man. Them. um and i think me and you combined real estate i have 15 years plus because i that's 15 years licensed yeah i've been leasing for my family since i was 16 years old drafting lease agreements for their properties so i have a a lot of experience you have I don't know 10 I have um maybe eight now and then that's corporate wise and then being marketing for realtors on the side another one so that's about like nine years of experience when it comes so to real combined estate. we have at least 25 years experience <laughs> both Toronto mainly and we're, we're a, a whole, whole person we're a whole grown adult, adult of years <laughs> <laughs> don't get scammed guys okay so stay tuned yes, for our next up. podcast. Absolutely. Um, just to recap, though, tips and tricks, most important thing. If you're looking to move, start early. Have your employment letter or employment contract ready. Pay stubs, all of these things are valid, up to date, driver's license, your credit check if required in the city that you're in. Um, and do your research. Do your research or work with a qualified realtor. Mm -hmm. These were like your hot tips of the day, 100%.
for sure. Do you have anything to add? No. Maybe from a long perspective? I was going to say, don't um, get scammed. Don't get scammed. (laughs) (laughs) Read up. Actually, that's true. Read up on like what the most recent scam trend is in your area. Yeah. And I think the number one I saw recently has been um, paying deposit for apartments that you haven't actually seen yet. So that is something Mm, definitely keep an eye out for so don't go be paying money and then not even seeing the place because 10 out of 10 times that person doesn't even own that property they just raking in money yeah. for you know yeah people who absolutely are. all right so yeah. i think that's great but thank you and we'll see you uh in the next yeah. podcast sounds good is for educational purposes only and is not intended to replace professional legal advice. We are not responsible for any losses, damages, or liabilities that may arise from the use of this podcast. The views expressed in this podcast may not be those of the host or the management. This podcast is solely for entertainment purposes. Please consult a licensed professional.